Chapter 10, Section 5 in the 7th grade workbook is entitled Surface Areas of Pyramids and Cones. As you can see, the page that's presented to you on the screen has been edited a little bit. All you're going to see here are the questions I'm going to be helping you with in this homework helper, questions 3, 5, and 6, and we'll see some cone questions in just a minute here. But I've edited out the questions that you're not going to see, which just gives me a little more space to work because there is a little bit of work here that's involved in finding the surface area, especially of the pyramid. So what you see in the upper left there is the formula for finding the surface area. Formula for finding the surface area of a pyramid is B plus one half PL. Some explanation is in order. B is the area of the base. Now, unfortunately, the base is not specific every single time. We can have different bases. So they can't just say, well, I'll do this or do this. They just have to say B right now, and we'll have to figure out what that shape is and use its area formula to find B. I'm going to add to that a half. And I'm going to take that half and multiply it by P. P is the perimeter of that same base piece. Perimeter, of course, just means we're going to add up all the sides. That should be easy enough for us to find. And then we're going to multiply that by L, which it represents the slant height. Not the height, not the height from the tippy top of the uh, pyramid to the center of the base, but the slant height is the height actually up one of the triangular faces. If we were to run our fingers along the triangle from the tippy top down to the bottom, that would be the slant height. So um, let's take a look here at number three. Number three is really the easiest of the questions I'm going to help you with here because the base piece happens to be, well, it looks rectangular, but um, I can tell you that since none of the other sides are marked, that means that these all have to be the same measures, meaning this is really going to be a square base. So I want to find B first, the area of the base. Well, since this is a square, I'm just going to take the side length and square it, or I can take 9.5 and multiply it by 9.5. However you want me to do it, the result is the same. 9.5 times 9.5 is going to change into 90.25. I also want to find P, the perimeter of the base. What I get when I add up the sides going around the base, so I have a 9.5 here, and a 9.5 here, and a 9.5 here, and 9.5 here, or in other words, I have four 9.5s. So whatever way you want to do that, four times 9.5 probably save you a little bit of writing. Four times 9.5 is going to change into 38. Now, of course, I need to find L, but I don't really have to do any calculations to find it. I'm just looking at one of the triangular faces and trying to find the height up the actual triangle. And as you can see, this dashed line that's shown in front is going to be that height here, the slant height, and it's marked at 11. So L that I'm going to dump into the formula is going to be 11. And with that, we're ready to put in some numbers here. B number 90.25 being added to 1 half times the P number, which is 38, times the slant height, which is 11. Half of 38 is something I can figure out. Half of 38 is 19. And 19 times 11 is 209. So this is 90.25 plus 209. 90.25 plus 209 changes into 299.25. And that's going to be B squared. So that pyramid has a surface area of 299 and 1 quarter square feet. Now, as we take a look at 5 and 6, 5 and 6 are a little bit different because 5 and 6 have triangular bases. So when we're finding the B and the P, I have to use formulas that are triangle specific as opposed to square or rectangle specific. It does change the tone of the question a little bit. B is going to be the area of the triangular base. Well, to find the area of the triangular base, I'm supposed to take its base and its height and I know that's the two I just pointed at, and I know that because they meet at a right angle. Formula told us that they do have to meet at a right angle. So that's going to be the 7 and the 6 here. And I'm going to take that 7 and 6, and you can either multiply it by 1 half or divide by 2. The result is the same. So I'm going to take 7 times 6 and divide by 2. Well, that's the same as from the 6 divided by 2, 3. 3 times 7 is 21. P is the perimeter of the base, what we get when we add up all the sides going around the base. And as you can see from the side markings here, this triangle is equilateral because all the sides are marked at 7. So to find the perimeter of the base, I'm going to do 7 plus 7 plus 7. 
7 plus 7 plus 7, it also yields 21. Different calculation, but the same numerical response. And L, L is the height up one of the triangular faces here. And as we look around three triangular faces here, we see on this back right side, it's marked as 8. So L is going to be 8. So take the B number, 21, add to that 1 half, take that half and multiply it by the P number, 21, times the slant height L, which is 8. Half of 8 is 4, and 4 times 21 is 84. And then I'm going to take 84 and add the 21 there, and 84 plus 21 changes into 105. And that's going to be yards squared. Much of the same story in number 6, because again, the base is triangular, but we've got some different numbers. Start off, I'm going to find the B, the area of the base here. Base is going to be the area of this triangular bottom here. And so I'm looking at its base is marked at 11, and its height is marked at 9.5. So for a triangle, I'm going to take the 11 times the 9.5, which is 104.5, but then, of course, divide by 2 or multiply by 1 half, because that's how we find the area of a triangle. And when I do that, that's 52.25. I'm going to multiply that by the P number. The P number is the perimeter of the base, which you get when you add up the sides going around. So that's 11 plus 11 plus 11, another equilateral triangle, which is, of course, 33. And then L, L is the slant height, what we get looking up the height of the triangular faces here. And that's marked here at 9. So we're going to go ahead and dump some numbers into the formula. It's the B number, 52.25. plus 1 half times the P number, which is 33, times the slant height, which we've identified as 9. Half of 33 times 9 is what I'm doing here. Half of 33 times 9 is going to change it to 148.5. And I'm going to add that 52.25 that's in front. That's 200.75. And that's going to be 